Washington. A city of handsome plazas and broad boulevards, beautiful buildings and art treasures. There would be major construction projects. Could we find skilled technicians and workmen? Engineering students eager to work on the research in the years ahead. Could we depend on local industry, local sources of supply? We were planning a major undertaking and many points had to be considered. We knew that wherever we went, we would need the cooperation of many people and of the national government too. Shipping and port facilities like these at Callao near Lima would be important for receiving tons of equipment. We would need import and customs agreements. Good international air service was another key factor influencing our decision. So were numerous other conditions such as housing facilities. In Miraflores, a suburb of Lima, we found these attractive residential areas. One key to a successful operation in Peru is the Instituto Geofisico del Peru. The Instituto is a scientific research organization of the Peruvian government. We decide on a visit to the Instituto's observatory, one of the world's highest observatories located near the magnetic equator. The trip begins with a spectacular train ride up the Rimac Valley through the Andes. This mountain route is an achievement in railroad engineering. It is the highest standard gauge railroad in the world and noted for its numerous tunnels and reverse switchbacks. The train reaches an elevation of almost 16,000 feet at Peak Leo. Surrounding peaks soar another 6,000 feet higher. We see yamas at elevations above 12,000 feet. Graceful, gentle animals, they serve as beast of burden and as the Indian source of milk, wool, and meat. Arriving, we pass through the village of Juan Cayo on our way to the observatory. The area's commercial activity centers around this weekly market. Here, the native Quechuan Indians do all their trading by barter. The Quechuans represent a large percent of Peru's population. Just beyond Juan Cayo, we reach the observatory. Here, we find scientists from many countries working together. The scatter radar project might well result in another mutually beneficial program. This would strengthen the close research ties that have existed for many years between the Instituto and the National Bureau of Standards. From the observatory high in the Andes, we descend again to the seashore to observe the coastline from the air. Peru's coast is arid. The cold Humboldt current comes up out of the Antarctic and flows past the Peruvian coast, creating the dry climate. It has not rained here for over 16 years. This would be an appropriate climate for our experiment, and these rocky mounds rising from the valley floor would be useful to shield radio signals coming in from low angles. Green growing things, like the vegetables we see being raised here, come only with irrigation. Here in this arid valley, only 17 miles from Lima, is the broad flat plain we need, with enough space for our enormous antenna. Thus, our search came to an end. We found an ideal location, the Quebrada de Jicamarca. Work was started. Earlier, a treaty had been signed between Peru and the United States, naming the Instituto Geofisico del Peru and the National Bureau of Standards as parties. Now, in August 1960, the site is prepared for construction. A diversion dam is built to protect the site from rare but dangerous wycos, or mud flows. In the mountains, it rains, sometimes excessively. The runoff surges down the canyon, a flood of thick mud. This massive destructive force loosens large boulders, sweeps them along, cutting deep gullies in the valley floor. In 1961, wycos occurred, 
the first in over 29 years. Up Canyon, this wire will sound an alarm at the site in case a Waiko should come. Work proceeds rapidly on the antenna. Here, Peruvian workers mark the ground and carefully align places for the post holes. Wood posts will be used to support the antenna dipoles. When the antenna is finished, more than 9,000 posts will have been set, covering a 22-acre field. The Peruvian workers proved they could learn quickly. They were soon performing these jobs skillfully. The inserts here being assembled permit the inside of each radiating element to be used as a piece of coaxial transmission line. In this way, the entire antenna is interconnected. Firm working schedules push construction along rapidly. The Peruvians not only contribute good workmanship, but each worker seems to realize the importance of the project. During the peak construction period, over 200 Peruvians were employed here. This provided an important boost to the local economy. With work underway at the site, the first contingent of bureau staff families comes to Peru. Homes are available for rent in Chaclacayo, beautiful little community with a pleasant year-round climate. Only 10 bureau employees and their families are in Peru during this main construction period. They are a small but effective group. Each one wants to develop friendships with the Peruvians to understand their customs and background. Here, for example, Peruvians and Americans together enjoy a Peruvian delicacy, aracuchos, barbecued beef heart. Many problems, potential major obstacles, were ironed out by this grassroots diplomacy. Such mutual understanding and goodwill helps to speed progress on the Hikamarca site. Wives of the bureau staff do much of their shopping in the local markets. All members of the family speak Spanish. The ability to communicate in the local language is an important factor in the daily lives of these U.S. families in Peru. There is always a wide choice of fresh vegetables, locally produced, and of fruits such as bananas and papaya from tropical eastern Peru. At Hikamarca, the building is ready, a half acre under one roof. Here is housed the huge transmitter supply 